So you think you've had enough of Selesnia? Hmm. Well, if you like your gameplay a little bit mean, you could always go and talk with the Ortsov. This is a guild that really means business. So a, uh, a guild that has enemy colors is a special kind of challenge, and we actually love this kind of challenge. It is very strange why black and white, for example, might want to work together. Why these colors have any kind of overlap at all. And it, it, they definitely have more tension built into them than the allied color guilds. The Orzhov believe, in a sense, that wealth is power and that they can create power through structure. How do you get structure? Through guilt and debt. That's how, that's how you get the structure that you need to generate money and the money will become power. And then the power is translated by the Orzhov into an afterlife. So one of the things when you're designing a guild is you want to get the right feel and the right flavor. And one of my guidelines is I want to make sure the guy who likes that guild, who wants to play that guild, that the mechanic makes them happy. I don't care if everybody's happy. I want the guy who loves that guild to be happy. Now, it turns out in my design team, I had an Orzhov member, Mark Gottlieb. The key to finding the keyword mechanic for Orzov, we will still wanted it to play like Orzov. It's not an aggressive guild. Mark Rosewater defined it as a bleeder guild, a bleeder mechanic, that it would sit there, it would stall things out, and it would just poke at you, poke, 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 just taking your life points just a little at a time, a little at a time. So the rest of the guilds um, in Gatecrash are reasonably aggressive, and a lot of the mechanics care about attacking. This was the counter to all of that slow things down and win on its own terms. For the Orzov extort mechanic, we had some concern that this would be a little too grindy and painful. Just extort you for one, extort you for one. Oh, 20 turns later, I finally win. We needed something that was going to cause the games to, to progress a little faster than that. So we made cards like the Knight of Obligation. The Knight, being a four mana 2-4 with Vigilance, you do feel like you are powerful and you can, you can extort and be safe. However, the Vigilance encourages you to attack as well so that you can get some damage through and get that game over in faster than 20 turns. So with Obzidat Ghost Council, the goal here is to have a redux of the original Ghost Council from Ravnica, sort of in an attempt to have kind of some callbacks to the original Ravnica. And the original Ghost Council is WWBB44, when it enters the battlefield, you get to drain your opponent for one, and then it has the ability that lets it uh, flicker in and out of play. And so we knew we wanted to have some sort of variant on that, but not have it be quite the same, have it be new, have it be something that doesn't relate to combat damage being on the stack, for example. And so Obzidat came out of this in pretty similar vein, but in a much more powerful fashion in that Obzidat just by himself represents this awesome threat and doesn't rely on other creatures to be awesome. He's just sort of in play and dominating your opponent all the time. The Viscopa Guild Mage is a good example of how we change the Guild Mages between original Ravnica and return to Ravnica. Now in the original Ravnica, they were all hybrid. So Orzov Guild Mage was a white or black card, meaning you spend white on it, or you could spend black on it, or both if you needed to. And it had two abilities, one activated for white, one activated for black. But the new one, they're gold, meaning you have to have both to use them, and it has two abilities again, but both require both color mana. And what we did is, we made them so they were synergistic. One of them, for example, grants you lifelink. The other, whenever you gain life, your opponent loses life. And so they're synergistic, so either one is good, or you can use them together to make something even more potent. One of the, the interesting things about being on the development team is that the set's already in a playable state when you get it. But the cards are uh, basically white, black and white stickers stuck to real magic cards. And so we play games of magic, we draft with them, but there's no artwork and they're all placeholder names. And sometimes the placeholder names are, are wacky, um, but sometimes they're incredibly flavorful and it really helps you get into the mood of what guild you're playing. So Merciless Eviction had one of my favorite playtest names. It was called Prayer of Disintegration. Originally, it had said exile target permanent and each permanent that shares a type with it. So there is this very weird play pattern that you would get into where if I wanted to kill your guy or if I wanted to wipe out all creatures, I might not target your guy because you might have some way to sacrifice him. I would target my creature and that would clear the board. Merciless Eviction is kind of the epitome of Orzhov, I think, whereas, say, Azorius is about control and law. Uh, Merciless Eviction is about penance and really, really bad penance.
my consecration, my commerce, my guilt, or Zav, won't you join us?